and welcome to Veltimer Castle of My Farm for 0% growth low turn count playthrough. I'm actually very sad that the first generation's almost over. I just like this generation much more than the second. This is also probably one of the last times I'll ever play through Fire Emblem 4 simply because I've played it so much at this point that once I'm done with this challenge there won't be too much left to do, but I really enjoy the first generation music, storyline, maps, everything about it. But I still have one last castle where most of it's just trudging against the uh, across the desert. It's kind of disappointing. Chap chapter 5, I, I really like it in terms of storyline, but I find it to be disappointing in terms of map design. The first fight is... The first castle of Lubeck is alright. I mean, like anything else in Fire Emblem 4, it can be trivialized if you know what you're doing, but it's pretty well laid out and fun. But Fenora and Veltimer are just largely treks across the desert with very little going on. But I digress. There's still a few things going on now. So at first you see Dew coming out. Uh, on, so the the Wyvern Knights from Thrasia they can catch up with my army, and they actually will as it char as I charge towards Veltimer, unless I send units to sit around Fenora Castle. So that's what Dew's doing, uh, just to make it so that the whole squad pivots away from dealing with my army. Maybe with careful weapon positioning I could obliterate all of them easily, but I don't want to have to... I don't see the point. I might have to RNG abuse. Why bother? Especially since all these characters are done with everything they have to do anyways. So here Sigurd gets his final items for Sigurd. For Salus, sorry. He just manages to get everything Salus will need. Um, I have to switch out the items a bit just because... Since I don't have much to say in this video, I'll explain my decisions on what Salus is getting in his loadout. So, the shield ring isn't... I didn't have him take simply because he gets too shotted by the axe armors in chapter 6 anyways. And I didn't have him take the light sword because almost everything attacks at one range. In the first cast of the next chapter, you can always swap out later. And unfortunately, swap items out later. He doesn't need it for the first castle, and he can use storage after that. The Night Ring is obvious, it lets him move and attack, which lets him grab a few more kills as he's charging towards the... towards... Gain, gain, towards Gainenshire. And Third Sword that can restore some health. Unfortunately, he spawns with a Slim Sword, so he can only take seven items in his inventory, and the rest will be sent to storage, but oh well. And Arden comes out too, because I need more bait. A lot of turns I'll have a bit of RNG abuse, it's just that meteor hits don't land. These enemies have low hit rates, so on a playthrough with growths they probably aren't going to hit much, but 0% growths it happens. Uh, rip do. Could have rigged him to stay alive because he has high void, but I mean, why bother? He did a lot for this run though, like honestly, tier lists are pretty much dead, but if there was an, ever another farm before tier lists, I would heavily advocate putting do in high tier simply because the ability to spread money around is just so like in any ranked or low turn count playthrough it's so useful because your most important units or units you want to be XP aren't going to have time to visit villages like half the villages in this game I, I skip not because they wouldn't be useful but because I have no time to put them on a useful unit so his ability to help them out with that is just incredible it's interesting how, in spite, in, uh, in spite of being a thief, he's the most generous unit of the army, whereas everyone else is just a jerk and won't give their items to anyone else. As you can see, I'm going off on a lot of asides, because this is just me pulling my army across the desert. So, back there, I gave Arden the skill ring and the wing clipper. This isn't because it matters, but because he's also going to get killed, spoiler alert, and... I don't know, I feel sorry for the guy. kind of wanted him to go down with a fight. And neither of those items are getting passed down anyway, so... You know, why not? Why not have him chip a few wyverns that I'm never going to kill? Sort of interesting, though, that despite the two Thrasian groups in this generation, I never fought either, or never killed a single member of either. They just do their thing, and I finish the map too quickly.
Um, so, there are probably a few optimizations I could do if this moved through the desert, but the point is, in this chapter, since I have to wait for Claude and Fury to pair up, there isn't really much reason to rushing, like, obviously going fast, but they can't pair until turn, uh, 13. I worked out a 12 turn strat for this map on 0% growths, but... I realized right when I was about to be in a position to seize in 12 turns that I couldn't because then I'd lose out on the rescue staff and honestly, uh, as good as saving a turn would be, the, having the rescue staff in the next generation, I'm not quite sure yet because I'm going to have to, it'll save between um, six and six or seven or eight turns in the next generation, more than making up for the turn lost here. I'm not quite sure because a few things later on, there are a few items I'm not sure if I can go without that I'd have to skip if I were to complete certain maps quicker, so... Expect uploads to come out a bit slower because... after this, because I... I planned out the first generation far better than the second, so there will still be a bit of experimentation going on, whereas this was just committing general strategies I had in my head to a turn-by-turn -turn plan. It's really unfortunate, though, that I couldn't cut the turn there. I was quite happy about managing to 12 turn this chapter, but it was kind of useless. So just to let you know what I could have done if I wanted to, this ne next turn Sylvie is going to die, but if I had rigged her to stay alive, I could have easily um, rescued her over to a position where right after Levin kills all of the freed soldiers, I could have just had Sylvia run, have Sigurd move forward a little bit, have Sylvia dance him, and then seize, but, and then, well, not seize, talk to Ida, but it just didn't work out that way, unfortunately. The amount of time it takes for people to pair is rather annoying. Thankfully, the slower pace of 0% growths makes it so that it's actually possible. So, one question that a lot of you might be asking is because in a normal LTC playthrough, I recently learned that Claude and Adine is actually far better than, than, uh, than Azel and Adine is. But the point is, I'm going at a slow enough pace that I can get the rescue staff at the beginning of chapter 4. And also, um, even though the rescue staff could probably save quite a few turns in chapter 7, 8, and. 7, 8, and 6. Well, maybe not 6, I'm not sure. But the point is that I have alternative strategy for these things. Like, I by no means, means need the rescue staff. And in chapter 4, I really 100% needed the rescue staff. Like, without it, there would have been no strategy, because, good strategy, because either, because I would have lost a bunch of turns, because having 11 foot slog, even with a leg ring, would just not be, would not be good. It would be slow and annoying. So I think that was definitely the best choice. And obviously, Claude and Fury, it costs a turn in this generation, but it'll save quite a few in the next one, so... It was the correct call. And this looks very reliable because Levin kills Raptor on the first t term with absolutely no RNG abuse. But that's actually incredibly rare. Even with Sigurd and Lexus there, um, Raptor has about an 80% chance to hit Levin. But it just worked out that that time it didn't hit him. And as you can see, with better planning, I could have seized on this turn, but because I needed to pair Claude and Fury and they weren't paired quite yet, I had to. had to do what I had to do. So, Ideen returns Claude so that he can buy and doesn't lose his action. There's almost nothing left to say. The generation's over. It was fun. And I'm not going to actually finish it on this turn because just in case things go wrong in chapter 6 the random numbers don't line up I want the, the option to burn random numbers in the arena here just to see if I can get a more favorable combination it's annoying guess and check but such is what I must do in chapter 6 so yeah 
This is completing 13 turns. The generation as a whole was completed in 96 turns. I'm pretty happy about that, and thank you for watching me this far.